بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فجلال المسلمين أمرهم ليتهابوا أهبة غزوهم فأخبرهم بوجههم الذي يريد والمسلمون مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كثير ولا يجمعهم كتاب حافظ يريد بذلك الديوان قال قعب فقل رجل يريد أن يتغير يظن أن ذلك سيخفى له ما لم ينزل فيه وحي من الله عز وجل إلى آخر الحديث صدق الله العظيم صدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب زدني علما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد وبارك وسلم We continue the hadith of Qa'ab bin Malik radiyallahu anhu's story when he remained behind and the expedition of Tabuk. One of the lessons we learned was doing khidmat of our parents and also the status of the people of Badr and those Sahaba who took part in the pledge of Aqaba and also how wealth can and the worldly possession can become a destruction for us and become a barrier from carrying out the ahkamat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last week we discussed about how we should strive for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we should cope with difficulties. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'een undertook this journey two months and it was very warm fi harrin shadidin and we mentioned about few examples of Hadha Mawlana Ilyas rahmatullahi alayhi Moving on in the hadith, فَجَلَالِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ أَمْرَهُمْ Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his life, when he went on a journey, on an expedition or a battle, two methods he used to implement. He would not clearly mention his destination. That was one of his methods. But he wouldn't tell, okay, we're going there. We're going in this location. Many wisdoms and reasons behind it. And on last minute, he will say, you know, we're going in this direction. Then he will guide the Sahaba in that direction. And one of the methods that he used to implement is that he used to mention, okay, we are going there. Like in this here, he clearly announced his intention where we are heading towards. So that the Sahaba can prepare accordingly. They can be prepared for this journey. So both methods are found in the practice of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Jahaza Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wal Muslimuna Ma'ahu wa Tafiqtu Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba and the believers with him made the preparations and tayyari and they will set out in the morning purchase whatever they need to for this journey Kabir Malik radiallahu says that I would do the same I would go in the morning to the marketplaces with the sahaba the sahaba would purchase whatever item they would require for the journey however فَأَرْجِعُوا وَلَمْ أَقْضِي شَيَّا I would go out in the marketplaces, but I would come back with nothing. And I've not done anything myself. I haven't prepared anything at all. So I would just delay my preparing and tayari. Now what we learn from here is the harmful effect of saying tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow. That I will do this tomorrow. When a person keeps delaying something, procrastination is called 
But when a person says, I will do this tomorrow. So when you say this, I will do this tomorrow, it is possibly is because of either laziness, anxiety, or sometimes the task that you have is a great task. So just looking at the task, you think, you know, I'll just do it tomorrow. I'll come bother today, I'll do it for tomorrow. Now, having this sort of approach and attitude, it will reduce our productivity and also at times we will miss the chance of achieving our purpose and our goal afterwards. So when we have a task, what we should do is we should plan it out. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that Al-Kayyusu man dana nafsa wa amila lima ba'd al mawt an intelligent person is he who holds himself accountable and also he prepares for what is coming in the future, i.e. after death. So he doesn't think that I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, then death comes and overtakes him and takes him after this world. So Prophet said that a clever person is who, who you know, plans ahead. So when we have a task in front of us, what we should do, number one, is turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek his help. Ask for his assistance and guidance. And also, we have one Muslim dua of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he would recite every morning and evening to help us not to have this sort of habit. And the dua is, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazani wal-ajzi wal-kasli wal-kasli wal-jubni wal-bukhli wa dhala'iddayni wa ghalabati rijali Here, yeah, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took refuge of few things. Number one, from anxiety. He also took refuge from sorrow, from disability, laziness. He also took refuge from miserliness, also burdens of de uh, debt and from the enemies. So when a person makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, protection from laziness, for example, anxiety, then what will happen is that he will have himmat, he will have courage inside him. He will be more you know, prepared and active. So this is the dua of the Prophet ﷺ that he would recite every morning and every evening. So now when we have a task in front of us, Number one, as we mentioned, is we should do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, we should make the habit of reciting the Muslim du'as of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam morning and evening du'as. They bring a lot of benefit to us. The other thing that we can also do is break down the task. Break down the task. That if you have a big task, you're not going to spend you know, the entire night completing the task. It's going to drain the person out. Especially if he doesn't need to give it next day. Sometimes it happens that a person keeps delaying it. You know, we have GCSEs uh, pre uh, preparing. We leave everything for last minute. And the last night we do, you know, bang our heads on the books and next day we all tired in exam time. So a person shouldn't do that. He should plan everything out. So if he has a big task, break down the task. So spend 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever a person is able to do. If a person does it constantly, then he'll be able to achieve his purpose and goal. And this is what is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith that when something is small, something is um, less, but it's done constantly, that is better than doing something large and just done once in a blue moon, once here and there. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he even encourages us that we do something and a small pace. For example, month of Ramadan finishes, our energy drains out, body dies out, we lack in recitation of the Quran, we lack in our salah, for example. Now a person shouldn't think that, you I'll do it next time. Let me just wait for the next Ramadan to come, then I'll pick up. It's too hard now. You know, if a person had the habit in the month of Ramadan reciting two, three paras and two, three juice a day, after the month of Ramadan, that might be become difficult for him to continue that habit. So that does not mean that he just, you know, abandons the Quran, he doesn't recite the Quran at all. Rather, he should plan it out. That, okay, I'm not able to read two, three Jews a day, but let me take time out to read 
couple of sides. For example, couple of sides after every salah or before salah. So if a person reads, for example, five sides salah, uh, five times salah every day and he's reading five sides, that's 25 sides then? That's nearly a two para again. So if a person plans it out, but he just dip by, bit by bit by bit, but he does constantly, then he will be able to increase in that as well. Yeah, he came to Darun uh, Bari on Thursday night. One of the things he mentioned is that we should recite the Rushri a thousand times a day. He said it's very easy. Now we think a thousand times, how am I going to do that? It's very hard. So he said, yeah, the easiest way of doing it is you decide the Rood Sharif 200 times after every Salah. If you were to recite Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example, we didn't say the example, but we'll give you an example. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad, for example, 200 times after every Salah. It'll take a couple of minutes, five minutes, for example. But you read it five times a day, 200, 200, 200, a thousand times then. And then he said on Thursday night, which is the Friday, you increase that to 10,000 if, you if you're able to. But if you plan something out and you do the task at a small portion, bit by bit, you'll be able to achieve your purpose and your goal. So this is one of the greatest lessons you learn from this hadith, that do not delay. Do not say, I will do it tomorrow. At times they say that tomorrow will never come. So if you have a task, prepare. You know, we're all going to leave this world one day. We're all going to be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're all going to see the consequences of our life. Either going Jannah or Jahannam, or going Jahannam, then Jannah. Allah forgive us and Allah protect us and Allah grant us entry into Jannah al Firdaus without any reckoning. Allahumma ameen. So we should plan. The holidays are here. No, our Jama'at Satis will know in our locality is around 500, 600 houses. Imagine if from all of those 500, 600 houses, there's one male and one child. That means for every salah, especially in the holidays, minimum number of people that should be present, uh, present in the salah is 500. So if there was one child who's matured or who's understanding enough, and he was to be in salah, for every salah, minimum number of people we should have is 500 people. Now if the parent, the father, if the father was also to attend, then they'll make it 1,000 easily. But when we give importance to something, work and tiredness doesn't stop us and doesn't keep us behind. If you have a party planned after the work, if you have to attend any events after the attend, for example, marriage or nikah, whatever, even though the person has been full day at work, and then you'll be mentally prepared that after work, I need to make sure that I'm there at the event on time, I'm there at the gathering at the time, I'm there at the food at, at time, on time. And he will remind his children and his family to make sure that they're prepared as well. They'll be ready on time. Why? Because there's importance to it. And this, if the father, even though he's working long hours, when he returns from home, for example, he's returned home by half past seven, it's Asar, Maghrib, and Isha Salah. Now, if the father, if the mother had importance, they would make arrangements for the husband and for the children to be present in Asar, Maghrib, and Isha Salah. So, the point that we're trying to make is that we need to prepare for the future. We need to prepare for our Akhirat. We need to prepare for hereafter. We are all going to be presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are going to be asked five questions about life, about youth. Even though the youth is part of life, but this period is a very detrimental and very important point, part of life. Either a person makes himself in that period of his life or at times he breaks himself. So it's important that we, whoever can hear this, show our attachment and we are to the masjid and be, pres and be present in the masjid, be present in the salah and prepare ourselves for the future. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give guidance and hidayat to ourselves, to our family members, to our community, to the people in our, time and, uh, in our town. And to the entire Ummah. 
and give them the importance of namaz, the importance of attending the salah and having that attachment and connection to the masjid. Allahumma ameen. So this is one of the lessons that we learned from Hadith Kaab bin Malik radiallahu anhu. Moving on. فَيَا لَيْتَنِي فَعَلْتُ ثُمَّ لَمْ يُقَدِّرْ ذَلِكَ لِي Hadith Kaab bin Malik radiallahu anhu, here he says that only if I did what I was planning to do, but perhaps it was destined for me to do this, that I would continue delaying it and I would miss this expedition. However, يَحْزُنُنِي I was very saddened and hurt by this. And the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba Allah, had left and I wasn't able to take part. So what lesson that we learn from here is that when we miss out a chance of doing a good deed, that should make us be uh, uh, sorry, that should make hurt us, that should be painful for us. You know, at times we miss the salah and there's no sign of pain and regret. Now, if a person has this inside him, you know, just like a fly that was on top of his head and he just flew away, it didn't affect him. So, when a person had the chance of doing a good deed, but he missed the chance of doing that good deed and he was hurt by it, it was painful for him. You know, he couldn't take what has happened. He couldn't bear what has happened. Now, if a person has this quality inside him, like Kabi Malik radiallahu anhu, he was able to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So like this, when we have this pain by missing out a chance of doing a good deed and we are hurt by it, then this quality will take us towards Tawbah. This quality will take us towards Tawbah. It could be any good deed. It could be doing any good deed. At times we walk in and some good thought comes to our mind, but we miss that chance and we say, Chalo, let's leave it for now. But then we miss that chance. For example, we were walking and there was something uh, that would be uh, dangerous on the path. We didn't move it and we moved on. The thought came to our, our minds to move that item out of the way, to move that litter out of the way, but we left it. Now that chance of doing the good deed, we missed that chance. But then we realize, oh no, I missed that chance. I should have done it. I would have got a naked and I would have got a reward for it. Next time, when a person has that chance again, he will remind himself and automatically the nature of the person and the uh, ruhaniyat of that person will remind him and then he will do that good deed next time. Why? Because he felt the pain of missing out the good, uh, the ch a chance of doing the good deed. He didn't do toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide him towards in do doing that action. So this is one of the lessons that we also learn from Hadith Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu. Another one of the last lessons that we learn from here is when Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reached Tabuk, wa huwa jalisun fil qawmi bi Tabuk, ma fa'ala Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sat in a gathering. Remember the number of Sahaba was such that Hadith Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu anhu says that the, there was no such a thing registered at that time. If somebody wanted to hide and not go in the uh, expedition, it was easy. The Prophet ﷺ was sat in a gathering and he asked, he looked around, he looked around and he said, where's Ka'ab bin Malik? I don't see him around. And what we le learn from here is that a couple of lessons doing register at the time of Salah, for example. Doing register and looking out for a person who's, miss, who's not present. And if you don't see a person, now this could be the responsibility of those who are responsible. However, every Muslim is a responsible person. Either he's responsible for his children, his partner, or he's responsible as an ummati of the rest of the ummah of the Prophet So when we realize that somebody in your friend's circle is missing, we should ask, that, you know, I was present for Zuhar Salah. Where were you? I was there at the gathering. I didn't see you there. So, asking about a person who is absent is also a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu He would do this quite often. That I don't see this Sahabi, where is he gone? He would send somebody. So the Sahabi, the mother of the Sahabi said that he was too busy in reciting tahajjud in the night time 
that he fell asleep at the Fajr and he missed his Fajr Salah. The Prophet said, said that it would be rather better for him to sleep during the night so he can be present in the Fajr time. So this is also the Sunnah of the Prophet when we realize that from somebody from our relatives, somebody from our neighborhood, from somebody from our friend circle, he may be in our masjid, he may not be in our masjid, but we remind each other, we ask each other that did, were you able to be, uh, were you able to uh, create a salah in the masjid, were you able to do, the, do this good deed or not. In this way, inshallah, they will realize that there's somebody is looking out for them. Somebody, you know, that, that will ring in their, uh, in their minds. That, oh yeah, my friend messaged me at that time, and let me go for my namaz today. Oh, let me do, do this good deed. In that way, we will gain the reward. And when we leave this world, if the other person continues to do the good deed, inshallah, we'll also receive the reward of that good deed as well. So a few lessons that we learned. One was not to delay, not to keep saying tomorrow and tomorrow. So if you are doing you know, a task, it may seem like it's a big task, but when we break it down and we work on it, we work on it, we put our effort behind it. For example, another example that comes to my mind is Hibs class. You know, sometimes we think that you know, doing Hibs is a big task. Yes, it is a great task. But then we work give time. You know, in this world, when you want to achieve good grades and achieve um, good um, skills and a uh, uh, high-paid job, we work for it. We spend hours. People travel to other countries, sacrifice their homes and uh, luxuries of their home to study in order to achieve that uh, grade and to achieve that, um, the quality and the skill that they require. So like everything in this world requires effort. Nothing comes without effort. We have to put something effort behind it. So like this, to achieve, so to become half is to achieve something, we have to and have to put our own effort behind it. If we realize that we, there is benefit for myself, this is something for my future, it's something for my hereafter, then nothing should become a barrier, nothing should become difficult for us. And we also learned about looking out for each other, taking care of each other, reminding each other, about good deeds and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our gathering we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to implement what has been mentioned in the durus in the dars today and in the previous durus and what we'll mention in the future and also all the lessons that we learn in on Wednesdays in the tafsir as well we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to implement all these lessons and attach ourselves to the Quran and the hadith and to the masjid and protect our iman and protect the iman of our children and especially in the holiday period we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give every child of ours in our community to be present in the masjid allahumma amin subhanallah bihamdi subhanakallah bihamdik nashhadu la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izati ma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa rahmatika ya rahman rahim